What's up Marvel fans, we're the Hills Maniacs, and today we're going to be reviewing and giving our thoughts on Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Okay, so before we get into it, obviously there will be spoilers for Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, because we're going to be talking about specific things that happened in the movie, and specific characters, or whatever. Yep. So, if you haven't seen the movie yet, go check it out then come back and watch this video. So I'm going to start off with one of the things that I really liked about this movie was the way that they not only paid a tribute to Chadwick Boseman and t the character of T'Challa, but the way they incorporated that into the story as well. Yeah. They didn't just kind of like gloss over it like T'Challa's dead, okay, it's a year later, move on, you know, we move on and it's just whatever this new thing happens. They made it part of the story because in this movie, we find out that Wakanda hasn't been trading the uh, vibranium with the rest of the world right. like T'Challa said they were going to after the first Black Panther movie. And that's because they've been grieving um, his or losing him and trying to get their country back on track and everything else over the last year. Because it did say one year later after his funeral. So they made that part of the story where like everyone's mad at Queen Ramonda and every and all the Wakandans for not trading them. So they're sending people in to try and steal the the uh, right. not just the Wakandan tech but vibranium and everything else. And the Wakandans keep fighting back, and that kind of made them enemies of the rest of the world and all these other countries and stuff. And I kind of like that they did it that way. To and to see the. Um, to see the way that like Queen Ramonda responded to all of this, I think it was a, like a perfect performance from Angela Bassett as well, just showing the emotion. Like I lost everything. Why are you still kind of like basically in a nutshell? Why are you still targeting us? You realize what we're going through and what we've sacrificed and all this other stuff, and you're gonna still, you know, try and get to us and take our stuff and everything else just because we're still in mourning right now. I agree. I think. The the tribute to Chadwick, I think, was, was what made this movie exactly what it needed to be. And, and I think the fact that they left the cause of his death, like the, the sickness, unknown, is the best way to pay your respect right. to him. Because we all know that what you know he he died because of cancer that he was struggling with for years even during the first black panther and into you know end game right. infinity war all of that so he kind of you know went through that you know without anybody knowing and so i think for them to put it like this in the movie and just leave it unknown is kind of also fulfilling that you know in a way and and i think for me the best part of this was the tribute to him in the Marvel logo at the beginning of the oh, movie. Oh, yeah, for sure. They had complete silence, right. no music, nothing, and just had, when it shows the, you know, it goes through the M, the A, the R, and all that, um, to spell out Marvel Studios, it had different performances from Chadwick as um, T'Challa in, in different movies, you know, Endgame, Infinity War, right. all of that. And so I think that was probably the i mean stan lee's tribute in captain marvel yeah, was that cool was good you know but the fact that they left this silent and just right. allowed you to remember who chadwick truly was you know that's i think that was what you right. know, and made were, it what it was and there were a lot of moments like that too where it was complete silence there was a moment where shuri was kind of just sitting on a beach yep. like basically burning um his funeral uh, clothes or whatever and she's just sitting there it's complete silence she was remembering some moments with T'Challa and stuff but it was also kind of like these were her moments acting with Chadwick in a way you know right. so it was showing flashbacks to the first Black Panther and stuff and we hear some words overlay from Chadwick or from T'Challa and stuff talking to her and everything else the way they used the silence and stuff just made it really impactful. Yeah. And you could tell, I don't think anybody really... I've heard a lot of people saying, like, the theaters they were sitting in and stuff were comp dead silent for this and stuff. It was a really nice way to make a tribute to Chadwick, but also to the character of T'Challa, because right. they had to use it... They had to kind of explain it, because they didn't want to replace... Ch yeah. some, they didn't want to replace recast. Chadwick right. or recast him... 
as T'Challa. So instead of having a new T'Challa, they just, you know, they, they worked their way around it. And I think they did it really well um, with the real life implications as well as the character. Like they show the grieving process. All the actors yeah. in this movie were phenomenal just in the way that they right. acted in terms of like in response to the death of T'Challa and everything else. I think it was a really good performance from everybody yeah. all around in this movie. And the way that they worked around his death and still made the story progress forward, still added some new elements to the MCU and everything else, and right. Wakanda going forward, I think it was a really great way of doing that, um, the way they did it in this movie. Yeah, and like you said, you know, with with the emotion, not just of Queen Ramonda, but of Shuri, of Nakia, of Okoye, right. you know, throughout this movie, that emotion that they had towards the loss of T'Challa, it made you feel that true emotional loss of Chadwick, and so... It wasn't just kind of like a, oh yeah, we're mourning this character. You know, like when Tony died, it was like, Robert Downey Jr. is still here. Like, you, right. you know, he yeah. could come I mean, back still, if we yeah. need him you to. You still feel you sad know? about the character and, dying. And, and or Tony whatever, died, but, but it's yeah. not as emotional as when you watch something like this where it's like, they are celebrating not only the character, but the actor who played that character. And I'm glad they didn't recast. I'm glad they chose to go down a different route because I don't think it would have been right. Or, or like, CGI'd his face onto somebody else's body. Right. Like, I don't think he, that needed to be done. I think they did it perfect how they did it. And like you said with the Angela Bassett's performance in this, I think it's Oscar-worthy. I really do. She did a, a fantastic job. We haven't seen much of her as Queen Ramonda in the previous, you know, especially in Black Panther, in Infinity War, Endgame, whatever. Like, it wasn't a whole we lot seen, compared to the other characters. Right, but, and, and like, she right. wasn't this deep into it like she is now, and now she is Queen of Wakanda, at least for the time being, you know, and her whole story arc is that she lost her son, and when Shuri gets kidnapped, you know, she she thinks Shuri's dead, she basically loses her whole family. She blames right. Okoye for it, and yet in the end, she still set, risks her life to um, save somebody who's not part of Wakanda in Riri Williams, right. you know, and, from Namor. And and that just goes to show you what kind of person Ramonda truly was. It's that even though she might hate the outside world for trying to take the vibranium from Wakanda. She also knows that it's not everybody that's doing it. It's right. specific people. And so you can't let that carry over, you know, to everyone. And so she was willing to risk her life for somebody outside of Wakanda. And I think that performance was just great from Angela Bassett. Right. And I like that they used this movie to... They basically made this um, Shuri's movie in yeah. a way. She's definitely like the main character of this because it's all about her grieving process similar to the way tony stark sort of mourns people or hi he hides in his technology when he's emotional right. or whatever or he's just or he's stressed out or whatever he uses his technology to cope with that and this is they did a similar thing with shuri in this movie where she's like constantly in the lab it start the movie started off with her trying to synthesize or create a brand new um heart-shaped herb to try and save T'Challa. We don't ever see T'Challa's body, but I mean, it says that she's trying right. to create a medicine to save him and then she doesn't get to it in time. And you get that grief throughout the whole movie and her hiding in her lab, essentially, she doesn't really want to do anything outside of the lab and stuff like that. And people have to convince her to, like, you need to fight for Wakanda yep. and all that kind of stuff because she's hiding she's grieving and she's hiding in her lab and everything else and then we get the gut punch of queen ramonda's killed later in the movie as well so you kind of get a revert back to that again yep. where like all of a sudden well now she just lost her mom too so now she's really like right. emotional about it and everything else i think that was a really good performance as well and I'd like to see what they do going forward with Shuri because she, I mean, we said spoilers at the beginning. She becomes the Black Panther in this, and I like that they ended the movie with her not wanting to take the throne 
like to be the new queen of Wakanda. Right. They left it open so that like Mbaku and other people can fight for the throne because she yep. wants to focus on just being the Black Panther, I guess. Right. And it shows that Black Panther isn't just the title that the person takes up. Like th whoever's the king of Wakanda or queen of Wakanda does not have to be Black Panther. Right. We saw that with T'Challa as well. Because his dad was king of Wakanda while he was just the Black Panther anyways before or like he, he acted as the Black Panther while his dad was the king. So in the same way here, we need a new king or queen of Wakanda right. while Shuri is out there being the Black Panther. So I kinda like that and she can take the Black Panther and like join the Avengers and everything yeah. else and it still elevates her for and going forward into the MCU. And make, it, honestly, it made her feel like a more important character yep. than maybe the first movie did, because she was more of, not necessarily a side character, because she did create the Black Panther suit and all that stuff, and she's really good with technology, but this was a more standout performance for that character, and really showed us who Shuri is, and what she's, what lengths she's willing to go to when she's lost everything and stuff like that. Um, and and the way Shuri was in this movie, you know, where she's she's mourning her brother, and now she has to mourn her mother, who also died. Her father died in, before Black Panther. You know, then her brother dies, then her mother dies. Right. She's losing everything. Wakanda's being attacked. She's so vengeful in this movie at first, and. It gets to the point that when she recreates the heart-shaped herb and she takes it to become the Black Panther and get that strength that the Black Panther had and go to the ancestral plane, she actually calls Killmonger as the ancestor that she sees right. instead of Ramonda, instead of T'Challa, instead of T'Chaka. I like this too, She sees they... Killmonger, and that's because when she took the herb, and he says this in the in when he's talking to her, you didn't do it, you know, to get to the ancestral plane. You did it to get the strength to get revenge on Namor. You know, right. just like he did. He wanted it so that he could rule and be strong and, and everything else. He didn't believe in the ancestral plane and neither did Shuri. You know, so Shuri didn't get right. to see it at first. And and so she actually in in her vengeance she summons this evil, if you will. Um and and basically by the end of the movie it's Queen Ramonda in her head that's telling her that's not who you like, are. Show them who you are you know, kind of thing. Yeah. She gets to the point where she literally could kill Namor and she hears her mother, and she look, she looks up, and sees the the spirit of Ramonda, and, and you know, and she says, "Show him who you are." And she, Shuri, ends up sparing Namor, which, in turn, basically settles, at least for now, the conflict right. between. We know Namor had another plan in his head when he yielded, but you know, he she let him live, and she didn't have to. But it's, it just goes to show you that, you know, one person on a trail of vengeance could do serious harm until they're turned back around. Right, and it showed her she used that power right. to still get revenge in a way, but not a revenge that causes you to kill somebody yeah. and go on a mad rampage and everything else. She used that power to over overpower Namor and prove to him, like... If you come at me, I'm, I can take you, you yeah. know, essentially. And that makes him yield to her and, you know, with uh, retreat and take his forces back and everything else. So I like that aspect of it as well, like you said. Um, another thing, speaking of Namor, I liked him as a villain in this movie. I think his motives were understandable because it wasn't just like, oh, we're just going to target Wakanda. He at first wanted Wakanda to help him fight back against the rest of the yeah. surface world or these other countries because they're starting to find... They discovered that there is another location that has vibranium in it in the ocean somewhere outside of Wakanda. Right. And they, uh, Namor and um, his people were using that vibranium themselves. And the fact that the surface world located this vibranium, that puts a threat on Namor and them yeah. under the ocean. So they needed Wakanda to help them. 
But then when, like, Shuri and all the Wakandans refuse and attack them to get... Especially Queen Ramonda, because she sends Nakia to go f- track down um, where Namor might have taken Shuri and stuff. And she, they end up attacking the... Or Tal... They end up attacking Talo Khan to rescue Shuri, and that leads to the war between Talo Khan and Wakanda for a little bit, or in the ending right. and everything else. So I like that at least his motives in this made sense, in a way that it also made sense, like, with Killmonger's motives. Like, he felt yeah. he deserved a shot at the throne as well, because he, I mean, which he did. his father was... Yeah. yeah, I mean, he had a legitimate point to that. So it makes it a more realistic villain when you can really connect with them and sort of feel like he's just doing it to protect his country just as much as Wakanda does things right. to protect their country. They don't want people invading their country, taking their resources. They'd rather if they don't share it with you, you don't get it. You know, and the the fact that the surface world they made the rest of the world essentially the villains in this almost. Which I kinda like that idea of it yeah. where like because of T'Challa opening the doors to Wakanda essentially yeah. at the end of the first Black Panther movie and even in Infinity War and everything else now the re- now that the rest of the world knows about the resources that Wakanda has yeah. they want it for themselves and since they made an agreement with Wakanda that they're going to share it and they're not now because of T'Challa's right. death that makes them go after Wakanda you know so I like that they kind of made them the the rest of the world yeah. almost the villains in this not just namor it's almost like namor could have not been in this movie and it still would have it still would have worked in a way like i know they wanted namor to be in this to have these two rival countries yeah. sort of cuz one's underwater and one's above water but it still might have worked if they hadn't had namor and just have like these other countries be the villains or somebody from this other country um be the villain that's targeting wakanda right and i mean it it goes to show you that one person's actions affect that of other people. And right. T'Challa, I'm sure they didn't know about Talo Khan and Namor, you know, when T'Challa was still alive. Because otherwise they probably wouldn't have did this. And I don't know, maybe T'Challa did secretly know about them and chose not to do anything. You know, but we find right. out that there's vibranium in other spots of the world, not just in Wakanda like we had initially thought so talo khan has been using this vibranium for years probably before wakanda ever started actually you know using it to to make stuff right you know but when t'challa said he'd share wakanda's vibranium with the rest of the world that then opened it up like you said with the people from around the world coming not just to wakanda but now anywhere that they can find Vibranium, which affects the territory of Talo Khan now because it's underwater and there's vibranium, you know, in the seabed and stuff. So right. when they send these machines down and affect Namor's people, Namor is going to attack. And and I don't think T'Challa did it on purpose, you know, but by Queen Ramonda saying, "Hey, we're not sharing our our um, vibranium." That might have also affected things, because if they had been sharing theirs, they wouldn't have to go look for it. You know, so in a way, who's at fault here? You know, was it T'Challa opening the borders, or opening the, the, you know, world to vibranium, or is it Queen Ramonda not sharing that vibranium like they said they would, that that causes this conflict to happen? And, And the way you said it with making the rest of the world the villains... I completely agree because without, you know, and spoiler for this too, uh, Valentina is in this, Val. Um, Valentina Allegra de Fontaine. Yeah, her, who's, I guess we um, find out she's the leader of the she, CIA. She's the current, I'll get into yes, more of the that current in director bit. of the CIA and right. former wife of, of uh, Everett Ross. Everett Ross. Yeah. And, um, I'll get so, into that yeah, in a minute. We'll, we'll talk about that in a second. But the way that she, her whole plan now is to invade Wakanda, basically. And we, we kind of see that throughout this movie, that, like, she has this kind of sadistic point of view. is Because Ross even asks her, imagine if America was the country that had all this vibranium, would we be in the same situation? She says, I have thought about it a lot. Like, she wants that vibranium for right. this country, you know? And so it, she's kind of the main villain. And, and with her leading the Thunderbolts, technically 
this random setup that we <laughs> put together, but that's yeah. a whole other thing. Yeah. Um, and the, it does technically make them the enemy of Wakanda and Talo Khan. And so you get that old saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, because now Talo Khan has to understand that if Wakanda gets attacked... And they take all the vibranium from Wakanda, but they know there's still more out there. Something's going to happen where they come for you next. And so they're going to have to understand and have kind of a, a symbiotic relationship with Wakanda. Like, we'll protect you up here, but if something happens down there, you have to protect us too, you know? So... Right, and that plays into sort of, like you you mentioned earlier, that Namor had another plan going, like after he yielded to right. Shuri and everything else, because he tells one of his people at the end, he says, when the surface world comes for Wakanda, Wakanda will ask for our help, and then in turn, then Wakanda would owe them, right. so they can use that leverage sometime in the future, like, well, we need your help now, or we want you to give us something, or whatever, so he's kind of playing the long game there, and I like that they left Namor alive for future movies. They could have a whole just Namor movie by it. So I've heard a lot of different rumors and stuff about what might happen next with that character. And also, you mentioned like the Thunderbolts and stuff. I think I've heard that that, that might be the plot of the Thunderbolts movie as well. Val recruits them to invade Wakanda or something to try and get the Vibranium which I guess would technically make Wakanda the villain to that movie. But I hope that's not all it's about or something. Like... Because that's one of the things I didn't like about this movie was that Val was featured in it in this way. Because they did this whole subplot with um, Val trying to... Because she's investigating it as the leader of the CIA. She's investigating all these like murders and things that are happening that Namor and the Taloconians, or whatever they're called, yes. Namor and his people were causing because they kept attacking the people of the surface world because they yeah. were discovering their vibranium and everything else. And she starts blaming Wakanda for it and making an enemy out of Wakanda. And then Everett Ross is secretly in contact with Queen Ramonda because we know he owes Shuri for saving his life in the first yeah. Black Panther and stuff. But this kind of went nowhere at the end. Like, they were using it to set up that, hey, I think these people are... The CIA is going to attack Wakanda and stuff. And then they just kind of didn't follow up with it. And it kind of took away from that and focused back on the rest of what was going on in the movie. And we never saw the follow-up to that. And I don't like... If they are doing it to set up some kind of... Because I've heard there's going to be maybe a Wakanda TV... Or a Wakanda Disney Plus series or something like that. Or another movie, or if it's using it for a future movie or whatever. I don't like that they left it out in the open like that. I would have rather seen them like attack Wakanda or something just to see, or just don't include any of this at all in the movie. That was one of the things that kind of took me out of the movie in a way because it didn't feel as important as it should. It was just a random way to put Val into this and bring yeah. her back into the MCU after this long absence. Because the last time we saw her was in Black Widow last year so she's, she's shown up three times in phase four so far but like it's been a year and a half or it's been almost two years since we really saw her on screen or on disney plus and all that stuff so and this was kind of a weird way to throw her in there like she wasn't recruiting anybody like we've seen in the last couple movies to the thunderbolts but i don't like that they left that like open basically and never really resolved that i don't like when a movie builds to now i know this is the mcu and they always build to the next movie but i don't like it when they do it this way necessarily yeah. where it leaves things too open-ended and you have to wait for the next movie to see for some other random movie where this will conclude or something where like wakanda isn't the main focus of it but it's part of another plot right. or something like that I don't like that they did it this way. I think they could have gone without having any of this. I mean, it was the way to it was a way to put Everett Ross back in this movie, but I don't think he needed to be in this one. It made sense why he was in the first one, I guess, because they ran into him in the first uh, Black Panther yeah. movie. But I don't think they needed him in this. And if they were gonna have Val show up, she seems like she's doing something important, you know, where she's like the next villain or she's building the Thunderbolts. To have her show up in an end credit scene to recruit somebody or don't have her in it at all, essentially. This felt like the most out of place movie to have her show up in again. I mean, honestly. it kind of. I, I was okay with it, I think, because 
it it goes along that that line of everybody just kind of jumping to conclusions about things that might happen in their world, you know, and, and it happens in, in the real world, too, where, like, somebody gets attacked by something, and we're like, oh, it was so-and-so that did it. Yeah, I, I you know. And, and it, it plays to that, right. especially with her being a government agent who is basically just, it, once she forms the Thunderbolts, she has this government-sanctioned group that can now do anything they want, basically, because right. or anything she wants them to do. Because she's head of the CIA, you know, which is elected by, I'm pretty sure, is elected by either the president or, you know, Congress. And, and so they obviously thought she would do good at being director of the CIA. You know, so there's something going on that she's playing, you know, and I think she's playing both ends of the of the thing, you know, right. where, where she'll right. benefit from this more than the country will and and i think i think i was okay with it being in this because it's going to set up that wakanda battle that'll make everybody else realize i shouldn't be doing this and maybe this is how the thunderbolts disband or maybe bucky will realize i probably shouldn't be part of this team like they gave me this arm they gave me you know they basically nursed me back to health in a way I you almost know, thought they with, were gonna make that, Bucky so. be the new Black Panther. But that would have been that. That might have taken away from it, though. I think it worked up until they didn't really like conclude the stuff with Val or anything. It just kind of like ended because then they end up rescuing the Wakandans. End up rescuing Everett Ross because he was being arrested because Val found out he was in contact with Queen Ramonda. Right. So and then that's kind of like where the story ended in a way. We didn't see Val retaliate. That would have been a nice end credit scene or something like Val retaliates or got, brings in or but, no, but we're like brings in somebody to target Wakanda to set up the next phase of whatever this battle was going to be. I just think it was like it didn't end the way it should have that that whole subplot in the movie. I I did think it it tied in with the movie. Because of the, all the stuff going on with Wakanda, right. and they never really found out about Talokan or Namor or anything. Anyways, they still just assume it was Wakanda that did these right. murders and everything else. But I don't think it that they should have concluded that subplot or in in some way. And I don't think it really did that. That's why I didn't think it really fit in with this movie. Makes sense. And then the other thing I didn't think fit in with this movie was honestly Riri Williams. Because really the only reason she's in this movie was to set up the Ironheart Disney Plus series. And even that doesn't really get set up by this movie. Because I think at the end of this movie she sa- she kind of just left. She didn't want the Ironheart suit that they made for her in Wakanda. She kind of just left. Her whole premise being in this movie was that um, she made a machine for like a science project or something that could track vibranium conveniently. And that, and she donated it to wherever, and they were using it. Or to they then, stole it. Or they stole it. What? Yeah, but somebody was using it to track down the vibranium, which led to the whole conflict with Namor in the first place. Yeah. So he asked Wakanda to bring her to him, or kill her, or whatever, to get so that she can't make any of the any more of these machines. And that's why, like Shuri, kind of rescues her and stuff like that. I think honestly, this would have worked with any. Just have like any old scientist or something could have done this. That's not going to be a main character of something later down the road. See, I don't know though. I think because... it would have worked without it being because this felt. It almost felt like it took away from what the movie was about a little bit for me because seeing all these scenes where like she basically builds an Iron Man. So it'd be like if Captain America showed up in this movie to help out. It kind of takes well, no, away from I don't, I don't think the rest so. of the movie. See, you know? I think I think introducing new characters is fine. Right. And and the fact that she was a student at MIT and she's smart, you know, this is one of the smartest schools in the world basically. And and for you to get into MIT, probably with the Stark program thing that he set up. No, it was actually the you know, um, the Wakandan outreach program. Okay, so even she still, see, she okay. already had something to okay, do let, with let, with the Wakandans. Okay. So to set it up, I get her whole story arc in this was was kind of meh, whatever. But to to have her be in it, I think if you had just brought in some random scientist, it wouldn't have felt as 
impactful, like when Ramonda went and saved her from drowning, well, yeah. and then gave her life to save this random, you know, Joe Schmo over here. Well, just, it's, that it, could have know. been. They could have turned that into she was just protecting Wakanda and then died doing it, or you know, whatever. I just uh, let me rephrase that. I think she shouldn't have built the Iron Heart suit or something in this movie. Oh, she she needed just something been, to fight with. She, she wasn't just going to not well, participate. Well, she didn't have to fight with them either. Well, they saved because their life. It kind of takes Why away wouldn't from, she help them? I know. Like, I just felt like it kind of takes away for, also from the Iron Heart series because I'm pretty sure that series is meant to set up that she starts building her own Iron Man suit. She's as smart as like Shuri and Tony Stark and everything else where she can build her own suit. And if right. it's already built... Then really, what is the premise well, no. of her series? One of them is already built. What was the premise of the other Iron Man? He built different suits in every Iron Man. I know, but it, there was a point he had an entire legion of, see, of Iron Man I don't suits. Know. I do like the idea of other heroes going to Wakanda to build tech and stuff. Like I could see that being something coming or going forward. You know, like maybe. Wakanda is where the Avengers base of operations could be in a way like go there for your arm a new armor or something that because imagine if all the Avengers were coded in I mean you think about vibranium everybody that has vibranium I mean Cap's shield is vibranium right. so Falcon that has that for... Bucky's arm is vibranium right. Vision is made of vibranium right exactly. like his whole that, body that, is vibranium so like so... I do like that that kind of opens the idea for that where like other imagine the Avengers all coded in vibranium and so I think even Kang the Conqueror would have a hard time breaking through that. Well, to now kill we the know Avengers. all of Namor and his people have vibranium, or at least Some Namor does. Vibra- yeah, right. So I do like that aspect of it. I just feel like she felt out of place a little bit in this. Like I, I don't know. Just to me, it kind of the the scenes with Ironheart kind of shifted the focus because if another hero is also fighting in this battle then it takes away from the Wakandans being the heroes defending right. their own. It'd be like if in Iron Man 3, instead of Tony being the one that comes through and ends up defeating Aldrich Killian and stuff, the Hulk just jumps in and destroys all of the peop- all of Aldrich's people and stuff like that. And then it's Might like, have well, made the movie better. <laughs> well, yeah, but it, it would have taken away from it, because it's an Iron Man movie, like, why do we need Th- or Thor or Hulk or something? Yeah, but I mean, we had him. that We had but, that in, in um, like, Winter Soldier, we had Black Widow, you had Falcon. Yeah, but it didn't, like... Know, all the Iron Man sense. movies, you have Rhodey anyways, you know, and then Ragnarok, you get Thor and Hulk for no reason, because Hulk's just on Sakaar. And that kind of, you know... Yeah. I know. It, well, it makes you... Because it's supposed to be... If you're going to have a solo movie about a specific character, don't have other characters popping up in it then. You know? Which is, I know... I get that the MCU is all connected like that. I just feel like the only reason that they had this be Riri Williams was to set up the Ironheart series instead of like... I mean, like, you're not wrong. Instead of but... making the Ironheart series and then having her show up in Black Panther or something, that might be a different story. Like, maybe she has to go to Wakanda to fix her suit. And she's just there... Or something, something along those lines, and she helps out while she's there, or something. That would make I more see, sense. See, I think it was flip flop. I think, I think, I think by having it be Riri, Riri Williams and not somebody else. Like, imagine if this had been like Ghost from Ant Man and the Wasp, or Red Guardian from Black Widow. Like, they wouldn't have made sense. Then it would make sense that like, oh, why is Red Guardian helping the Wakandan? You know. But with Riri Williams being part of the Wakandan outreach program, going to MIT, creating this thing that can find vibranium, which is basically just in Wakanda and Talo Khan under the water, you know, of of all things for her to be able to create, she had that mindset to be able to track vibranium. You know, and then she builds a suit out of vibranium, the strongest metal on Earth, supposedly. Mm. Um, you know, for her to then build a suit in Wakanda with Shuri, and and be able to then, you know, use that to help the Wakandans, but then take that knowledge, leaving the vibranium there that she very easily could have taken with her and sold or used for something else. She leaves it in Wakanda because she knows it'll be safer. And, and she then, can come back, and, and for, she can it come she back for it if she needs it, because Shuri's not going to tell her no, or M'Baku, whoever the king or queen is. And, you know, she goes off to build her own suit, but her own way, just like Tony Stark did. You know, he built with what yeah. he had available in the first one, 
and then once he got back home, used the stuff that he had available. I know, but he didn't get. do that in another yeah. movie, did he? He didn't show up in the in the half of it wasn't like half of he the did first show up in the end credit scene of the Incredible Hulk. It wasn't like half of the first Captain or second Captain America movie was Tony Stark fixing his suit and helping Cap. No, against but it's Winter not Soldier like they just something. focused on her fixing her suit no, because they did I'm it at the same that, time like, as Shuri recreating the heart shaped herb. So it showed both of them together trying to figure this out, yeah. and they were working together to build the machine to trap. Um, Namor in to dry him out so that he couldn't breathe. I know, but it's not like you know, it's not like she was just here not doing own. anything like Everett Ross in the first one up until the point where he ends up shooting down the ship. Well, in the even that, if you think back to that movie, that also kind of because technically he saved the day. So it's almost like, in a way, that had nothing to do with Wakanda or Black Panther then, because kind of, other than, you know, T'Challa killing You can have side characters. I know, I just felt like it focused on her a little too much. And it was I only, she was only fun. in this to set up the Ironheart series. But was there anything that you didn't like about this movie, any little nitpicks or something that you might have had about it? There wasn't much that I didn't like. I mean, I think... I think everything fit fine, and it might just be because of the nostalgia of it being dedicated to Chadwick and, and all that, but I just, I think it was a good movie as it was. There were some scenes that, like, it could have been like that, like the whole thing with Ross and Val talking in her kitchen or his kitchen, whatever, right, cause that's and, what, and that's she a lot says of about... What... All that stuff. Right. But that part could have been left out or left for speculation or whatever. But her being in this, I don't think, was pointless. I think it had a good setup for it for the future of the MCU. I think Riri Williams being in this. And the fact that Okoye um, gets stripped of her title as General of the Dora Milaje and ends up becoming, what was it? The Night Angel. Night or Angel or whatever. Her yeah. and... Um, Akira or whatever the the other one's name is. It might be Akira, I think. Um, okay. But they they end up becoming the Night Angels, which are I guess actually people in the comics that were basically ex Dura Milaje, you know, that fight as warriors of Wakanda. Yeah, that, that fit pretty nicely so, too. All of that I think worked well together. Uh, Queen Ramonda's stance as queen, you know, for the trading Wakanda, I think it was a fair point that, like, you know, you're talking behind our back about our king being dead. Why are we going to give you something that you can use to destroy us when we don't have a protector? Right. You know, that, I think, fit perfectly. Namor's story arc, I think, was, was fine with this movie. I don't say this all the time because most MCU movies have been poop recently lately yeah um you yeah. know especially you know multiverse of madness and, and all that even the even the disney plus shows are kind of going downhill but they're trying to build this world that they can't really build much off of now but you know with with how it is i think this was my favorite since pretty much endgame um of of movies and and i'm sure people will go through and and say well, this shouldn't have been here, or this was blah, 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 you know, and, and I understand that no movie is perfect, there's nothing, right. you know, perfect about any anything, but I just, for what it was, I think everything fit fine with the movie, and it wasn't dragged out, I mean, th there were a lot of dragged out scenes of, of them, like, or long scenes of, of them kind of talking and being emotional and all this other stuff. And, and like, when Queen Ramonda and, and Sherry are sitting on the beach talking when Namor first comes to them. You know, it's it's kind of a long scene where they're, you know, talking back and forth. And she says, I want to burn the world and blah, blah, blah. But it's it's impactful for the story. And so I right. think it's okay. You know, I, I like action movies to have a lot of action and, I, you know... But I think that is okay for a situation like this where Shuri is mentally going through these different emotions. Like, she wants to mourn her brother, but she doesn't want to let him go. She also doesn't want to believe that he's gone. And then she, she wants to get revenge on the people that, in a way, you know, killed him. And then later on, when... when uh, Ramonda when Ramonda dies, and then it's like, well, now I gotta kill Namor. But then it's also like... 
you shouldn't be because you're the Black Panther. That's not what you're supposed to be representing, you know. So it's, it's this emotional battle for Shuri and Okoye when she gets stripped of her title. And, and even Nakia, who we find out at the end of the movie in the mid credit scene that she is the mother of, of T'Challa's child. But they, they, have a, they have a child together who's six years old, which means they, they, she was pregnant with him. During the blip. during the the battle in Endgame, right. um, and then or in Infinity War. Well, it was and actually then, it would have been during the blip, I think, probably. Well, then, right before he blipped, whatever, they yeah, would have, yeah, yeah, she well, would have yeah, been pregnant. Yeah, so yeah, right. so before the the battle in in Infinity War in Wakanda, which is probably why he told her to stay away from Wakanda for all that time because he didn't want her in this danger. But to find that out at the end, you know, it was just it was a great movie i think and the fact that his son's name is t'challa See, means that you can still have a t'challa I've in the mcu com- i've heard people complaining about that too because like oh they did recast t'challa it's like not risk t'challa jr it's Basically, not the same yeah. person he's not gonna be t'challa you know yeah. he's he'll grow up and become black panther someday or something they right. can have whatever course of I mean, time knows, pass that they want he knows who his father MCU, is right. you know he knew who his father was as, as a person he knows who his mother is. He knows who his aunt Sherry is, you know. So he he knows that he's six years old, but he understands that he can't do that yet. You right. know? And, and I think that, he's too right. young for the Young Avengers right now. But I think in the future, he could be a a head member, or he could be the Black Panther that that ends up, you know, maybe marrying Storm down the line. You know, because in the in the comics, there's an X Men and and Avengers thing, you know, where where Black Panther and Storm get together and and we don't get know married. how old Storm you is. Know, Storm MCU, might not yeah. have. Storm could be six right now too. You know, we we don't know. Or, or, close or to younger, that age. you know, yeah. close to that age, and they could end oh. up being together. We haven't seen that's them true. yet. They haven't brought them into the MCU. Who knows? Maybe that's the way they'll go. And he'll be that Black Panther that that we know from the comics, since T'Challa couldn't do it. And he is technically still T'Challa. He could right. be that Black Panther for future titles that that need, you know, that aspect of it. Right. All in all, I mean, I'd give this movie like a four out of five if I were to. I don't think it was perfect, no. li- like you no, said, because there were some yeah. things that even I was nitpicky about. But like in terms of the MCU and the all the Phase Four stuff, like you said, I think it was definitely better than like Thor: Love and Thunder, and even some of the series and stuff. But I don't know if I'd say it's like top three for the Phase Four movies. I think. Um, what What do you think? Like, what What would you rate it? At? Yeah. No. Like it's a, It's definitely for for Phase Four of the MCU. It is definitely at the top. I think. Um. There's. Uh, yeah. There's. There's a lot of <laughs> crap in in Phase Four. I mean, yeah. Shang Chi was good. Black Widow was good. Other than that, you know, Eternals just <laughs> and they bombed. Mm-hmm. So. It, and, and, but the fact that like the the shows are ranked higher than Black Panther: Wakanda Forever in on, like, ratings, Tomatoes scores, and it stuff. just it's blows just, my that's, mind that's because She Hulk yeah. and Miss Marvel are are, are they are not that no. good. So, but anyways, I th- but, I think Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. I don't know. Maybe it was just the story or the emotion behind it or what. And maybe after rewatching it later on, maybe I won't feel the same. You know, you can change your opinion. But right. I think for it being the first time us seeing Wakanda, us seeing Shuri and the Wakandans and uh, this whole story arc since the passing of, of Chadwick, I think with it being rewritten however many times and, and things going on behind the scenes that, like, Letitia Wright almost didn't come back and... And right. it, all this controversy and stuff going on, but I think for what it was and what it ended up becoming, um, I I think it was good, and I I think it would be a four out of five. I'm not gonna give anything a five out of five because there's no perfect movie. You know, even <laughs> Star Wars War. for me is, is Infinity War still wasn't perfect either. Okay. But yeah, um, yeah, I just it's for me it's definitely the top of of phase four right um so there you go guys those were our thoughts on the movie if you saw it let us know what your thoughts were down in the comments section did you enjoy it what didn't you like about the movie necessarily um also be sure to like this video and subscribe for more marvel related content down the road remember leave the scumbaggery at home and we'll see you guys in the next one bye guys